Now that I'd gotten to know ammonia a little bit better, I felt it was time to introduce ammonia to salt. Using a paper towel fume chamber, I sprinkled a lot of salt and I sprinkled a little bit of salt and then let cook for one hour and let fully dry. At this point, I was not too impressed and really hoped an increase in cook times would offer up a better result. I repeated the experiment three more times with cook times of two hours, three hours, and four hours. Around hour three, things started looking up. I especially liked sample eight, which led me to one last sample in this grouping, a little bit of salt and a cook time of five hours. At five hours, the salt has completely dissolved and a dark purple outline and a light purple haze has appeared. It was at this point that I noticed the dusty olive brown background. It was very similar to sample one in the ammonia only patina group, which you may recall cooked for five hours. This gave me an idea. What would happen if I combined the two patinas? I started with an ammonia only patina. We'll call this the base patina, which first cooked for 12 hours, sprinkled a small amount of salt and continued cooking for an additional 12 hours for a total cook time of 24 hours, then let completely dry. I was quite pleased with the results. As I had hoped, the ammonia-only base patina formed a lovely green and the salt blue. I repeated the experiment three more times with varying cook times. The two patinas have blended together quite nicely to form a smoky, swirly, wispy, watery patina. A very different effect than the salt-only samples. Why? Now there's a good question. It's all about moisture. Without moisture, the salt would simply sit there doing nothing. But add a bit of moisture and the salt begins to dissolve, forming the patina. During the cooking process, condensation forms in the fume chamber. The fume chamber acts as a type of ammonia condensation collection system, causing ammonia moisture to form on the copper. These droplets of moisture eventually dissolved the salt, which explains why longer cook times result in, well, more patina, or more blue if you like. In the case of my mixed patinas, when the salt was added there was already enough moisture on the ammonia, only base patina, to quickly dissolve the salt creating a salt solution. Plus, I left the salt cooking between 12 and 24 hours, giving it plenty of time to fully dissolve and form the patina. The moisture also acted as a blending agent, much like water does in watercolor painting, allowing the colors to blend into each other. Which brings us nicely into the next group of patina samples. I thought I'd try and speed up the salt dissolving process by first spraying some ammonia and then sprinkling a bit of salt and let cook for two hours. Then let completely dry. And the result? That's a lovely blue. I thought it was time to introduce salt to some other liquids. So I sprayed some water onto a piece of copper and sprinkled a bit of salt. I'm going to pause here and point something out. Poolage. Poolage. Sometimes liquids will pull in or pool towards the center or edge of the copper, otherwise known as poolage. I don't think that poolage is a word. Yes, it is. Can you spell it and use it in a sentence? Poolage. P-O-O-L-I-G-E. Poolage. As I wanted to patina both sides of the copper, I flipped the copper, sprayed and salted the other side, and let cook for two hours. Then let fully dry. The result? Patina poolage. Oh, patina poolage. What causes patina poolage? Many things can cause patina poolage. Well, actually, only two. Firstly, the tendency in liquids to resist separation and remain pooled together, some more so than others. And secondly, gravity. Gravity? How so? It would be near impossible to lay my copper perfectly even within the fume chamber, so any liquid on the copper 
would gravitate to the lowest point and pool. Is there any way to prevent patina poolage? Yes, and we'll find out how in sample three. For sample three, I sprayed soy sauce on copper. Soy sauce? Earlier in the day, I was munching on some sushi and started thinking about soy sauce. If I was experimenting with liquids, why not soy sauce? So I sprayed some soy sauce, sprinkled some salt, and let cook for 30 minutes. At this point, I noticed soy sauce poolage, but I wanted more coverage. Question, what was the cause of the soy sauce poolage? Was this a case of soy sauce patina gravity poolage or soy sauce patina separation anxiety poolage? So I changed the placement of the copper, hoping the soy sauce would spread itself around. It didn't. So not soy sauce patina gravity poolage must be separation anxiety poolage. So I used a paintbrush to move the soy sauce and salt around, added a bit more salt, then let cook for an additional one and a half hours for a total cook time of two hours and let completely dry. The result? Ooh, yes. For sample four, I wanted more coverage on both sides. So I sprayed some vinegar. Vinegar? Yes, vinegar. Vinegar came to my attention during my original research into known ammonia patinas. We'll fully explore vinegar for patina making in and around class three or four. There's lots of fun to be had with vinegar. So I sprayed some vinegar, sprinkled some salt, flipped the copper, sprayed some vinegar, sprinkled some salt, let cook for 15 minutes, got painterly, let cook for 15 minutes, flipped the copper, got painterly, sprinkled some salt, let cook for another 15 minutes, flipped the copper, got painterly, sprinkled some salt, let cook for 15 minutes, flipped the copper, and got painterly, sprinkled some salt, then let cook for one hour for a total cook time of two hours, then let fully dry. And the results? Better coverage on both sides. Let's have a look at all four samples. I have to say, I prefer the coverage of painterly to the poolage of au naturel. So I cooked up some more samples and got painterly on water and ammonia. Better coverage, but not much of a difference in color or texture between ammonia and water. Although vinegar shares the same color palette, the texture is very different. Soy sauce shares a similar texture with vinegar, but the colors are quite unique. Adding some salt and playing with different solutions can bring a nice range of color and texture to your patina recipes.